97.3 ESPN presents the Sports Bash with Mike Gill. It's time for Football at Four with Adam Kaplan, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. We expect to win every time we step on the field. That's just the, the mindset and the culture that we have. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Make sure you check it out tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. and the Inside the Birds pregame show two hours before game time. Eagles, Giants, this Sunday, Adam Kaplan is back for InsideTheBirds.com and the Inside the Birds podcast on Football at Four, which is brought to you by PlaySugarHouse.com. Sign up now. They'll match your first deposit up to $250. As always, the third member of Football at Four on Thursday He's Adam Kaplan, and he joins us now on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. Adam, what's up, pal? Hello, boys. How are you today? Doing good? <laughs> yeah, man. We are all set all right. ready to go. It's good to have football back yeah. this week after the bye. It is. It is. The, I know, Mike. The, the bye, It's kind of weird. I don't remember the last time the Eagles had a bye, actually, technically, right at midseason. And, you know, talking to players and coaches over the years, they love that. Uh, they don't like an early bye. They like to have it later in the season. This is a good time for them to have it. Uh, they're going to get a bunch of players back this week, uh, which is a good thing. A couple guys won't play, but most of the injured guys are going to play. And uh, everyone yesterday was practicing on their 53-man roster, so that's a good thing. All right, a uh, lot to dive into with this because uh, the injury updates here. So let's start one by one. Miles Sanders, does he look like he will play? Uh, he was listed as limited yesterday. Yeah, he practiced fully today. I'm told, barring setback, he will be in the lineup. We actually put that on our show uh, this week. Uh Jason Peters will play at left tackle. Uh, he's over his, his foot injury. Uh, Craven LeBlanc will be back this week. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey, barring a setback, will play. He'll back up. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what his role is, but he, uh, he's expected to play. Uh, everyone's The only guy who right now is a little bit iffy is Lane Johnson with his ankle. It is the surgically impaired ankle, I'm told, that continues to give him issues. He's, I would call him questionable right now to play. Uh, Craig James did not work today with his shoulder injury. Um, I know earlier in the week they were optimistic. But the big ones coming back are Miles Sanders, and a guy who's not on the injury report because he doesn't have to be. He's on injury reserve. Isaac, Isaac Samalo, I'm told, most likely will be able to play. It will be the first time, as long as he has, doesn't have a setback, Mike, the first time since week two versus the Rams that he would play at left guard. I was going to bring him up because, uh, yes, he's not on that list just to see where he is, and he will be back at left guard. You would have Jason Peters at left tackle. You would have Nate Herbig at right guard, and hopefully Lane Johnson. This might be – uh, Adam, the best offensive line they've had all year. It would be. If if Lane could play, I never want to rule, rule him out of playing. But he's just not over the ankle injury. Remember, he had the surgery in, in, in uh, mid-August and has not been right. He keeps playing on it, and that, that's the reason why he just cannot get it right. It's a shame. All right, so Alshon Jeffrey, let's go back to him uh, because yeah. you mentioned that barn is set back. He will play, and it sounded like you were saying he was going to be the backup. I, I want to ask yeah. you in this way yeah. because yeah. I don't know Doug Peterson to have his veterans just sit there on the bench. It seems like when they're available, he gets them back out there. So does Alshon just sit with a helmet under his, uh, you know, under his arm all game long? No, he'll be the backup X receiver, which they were thinking J.J. Ortega White's out to be, but he did not earn that role. He just. You know, you saw in training camp, he, he did some good things. He was coming along a little bit, but the coaches simply do not feel like they need to use him, and he's been relegated mostly to special teams. So they're going to need you know, 10 to 12 snaps a game, uh, maybe a little bit more for Jeffrey uh, to back up Fulgham, to give Fulgham a little bit of rest. Because Fulgham really going, if Jeffrey can't play, they don't really have a backup for him. Uh, so they need to do that. Uh, and then also, there are certain packages you could put both on the field, because Fulgham, as we've seen, he doesn't just line up at, at X. He's their number one X. But they've moved him in motion. They've put him inside at, in the slot. They've, they've played him outside on the other side. So right now, that's kind of the way I see it. Fulgham Cleary is the guy, and, and really, quite frankly, one of the two or three best stories for this football team this season, quite frankly, the best one. Knowing that Doug Peterson has openly discussed the red zone struggles, do you think that's an area where maybe Alshon can help this team out? Yeah, Hunter, that's actually what we talked about in our last show. Uh, which dropped yesterday. We actually talked about what his role would be when he'd come back, and particularly in the red zone where they just have not been good enough. You know, since Wentz became the, the, the starter uh, in 16, and, and quite frankly in 17, they were amazing. They were the number one in the red zone in the National Football League. 
most most of the times they're really one of the top teams, but this season they've not been as good for whatever reason. And having a guy like Jeffrey who's been very effective in the red zone, uh, six two and a half, and it's got good length, and that's really where he uses leverage. So yeah, I think that's certainly an area. By the way, with Dallas Goddard coming back last in their last game against Dallas, getting him back full time, and he will be way more involved in the, in the passing game going forward. You put all that size in the red zone, and certainly it should improve. Now you mentioned Lane Johnson, and uh, you know him being iffy. You also have Jack Driscoll with the ankle problem too. So are we looking at Jordan Mailata being the next guy up at that right tackle spot? Yeah, I think it would be Mailata there at, at right tackle. If if uh, if for some reason that Driscoll can't go, uh, he's still questionable. I call Driscoll questionable. Lane questionable. See, the thing that they have to answer, we still have not gotten a clear answer on this question. We know that Lane Johnson keeps going to games and leaving early. That that's just something that they've had to deal with. Would they be better off just giving Lane one more cha- one more game to rest that that ankle, or do they just want to go in saying, "Okay, we'll play him. We know that he might leave, and we'll we'll get my lot ready, and we'll get him on standby." Mm-hmm. That's something that Doug Peterson has not been kind of up and up out in front about. Although I would tell you in the past, when Lane said I could go, he goes, and then they just deal with what happens during the game. Now, that uh, the injury report just came out. Jack Driscoll is listed as a full participant. Jason Peters as well. Lane Johnson as limited. Nate Herbig full. Yep. So, Jack Driscoll full. I guess that's a good sign that maybe – now, would Driscoll get the call over Mayalata? That's something they have to make sure because today – tomorrow is their light practice, which is about an hour – and they have the Saturday walkthrough. They'll make that decision by, by uh, well, generally what they do is they review all the practice tape, and then they go over, they have a personnel meeting on Saturday and decide who's going to start there. There will they, only have to be a decision if Lane can't play. I just, I, he's just, Lane is not completely over that ankle, guys. That's my understanding. So he's just going to have to show that he's ready to go. And, uh, you know, they, they, he's not taking every first-team snap. And uh, we'll, we'll have something on our, our pregame show are inside the birds pregame with myself and Mosher and, and Trey Thomas and Greg Cosell on this exactly. Uh, once they get through practices this week, we'll have a better idea. But look, the great thing is Driscoll's practicing. He, he took more reps today than he did Wednesday. That's a good sign. And they're almost completely healthy, Mike. I didn't know we'd get to this point in Week Ten, but we are. Feels good, doesn't it? Uh, if you're an Eagles fan, finally you can. And and with that, um, the offensive game plan and the adjustments with the personnel they have going forward now that they are healthy. How different? Uh, of a game plan, can they put in because of that? Yeah, and this is the one thing. Uh, we didn't talk about this on our show Wednesday, but we're going to talk about it on tomorrow's show, but I'll give you a little preview. See, every week we have this running joke, will they be 11 or 12 personnel? And when Ertz plays, it's always 12 personnel because both tight ends have to play. Well, we know that Ertz and Goddard have not been healthy at the same time quite a bit this season. They, they've both missed time. But with with Zach out in the last game, you saw that they were a lot. They were way more eleven than they normally would be because Richard Rodgers, the only other tight end, he barely played. He played less than twenty-five snaps. So my sense is there'll be a lot of eleven personnel. Oh, but one thing I should mention: it's right now. Now, of course, forecasts can change, but right now it's just rain on Sunday all all game from beginning to end. Now that could change. The wind looks moderate, but rain, as we saw, could could sometimes impact passing. And then with Miles Sanders expected back, that's a great sign. Though with him back, you'll be able to, you'll be able to get more carries out of him, obviously. But looking at the, the self scout during the bye, to me they got it more without Zach Ertz. They've got to be more eleven with Goddard back. They need to get him out in, in pass routes. He, he was not really as you saw guys in the last game. He was blocking almost the entire game. That's got to change. The screen game with Miles Sanders coming back, they got to get him involved in that area. Uh, they'll be able to take shot plays with Jalen Rager back now full-time. He played in the last game. He did score. So they've got so much offensive versatility, guys, for the first time all season, and it's going to be fun to watch. Um, Jalen Rager, I want to get your take on. Are they? Is this how they plan on using him, or is there still more to evolve in the way that he will be used in the offense? Well, several things. A, he can return punts. I, 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 I know that a during, before the game, his last game against Dallas, he was returning punts, but he didn't. He did not in the game. But you could see him start returning punts where they need to be better. Uh, you could use Jalen in in the slot for Greg Ward at times because Greg Ward is not fast. He's, he's got good chair, short area quickness, but he's not a deep threat. So you could line him out, up out of the slot. Uh, more end arounds, uh, ghost motion. You saw the the orbit motion in the last game. You could do that with him. Uh, yeah, end arounds you could do. Uh, you put him on the outside at the X position. He's going to be their Z. He's going to be their Z receiver. Z receiver opposite Fulgham guy. So there's a lot, Mike. Yeah, the way you asked it, that yes, there's so much you can do with him. Now that he's back, and by the way, I was told his conditioning was great in the last game. So 
you're gonna, I expect I expect him to, to uh, you know expand his role and you know, John John Hightower. I mean, he's got a limited role right now. That's probably what they want. That was what he was drafted to do year one. He had to play a lot because Rager is out. Now Rager's back. That's the rotation. Rager is their starting Z. This is the second time in three games that the Eagles are facing the Giants. How does that impact the game plan? Yeah, I don't know that it'll be much different. They did learn, though, that in that game, you know, they, they should have lost. Evan Ingram got them pretty badly in that game. In fact, he should have caught that last ball, and that would have ended it. Um, they, you know, remember, Darius, they had a couple injuries in that game. And Darius Slay, we didn't mention, is not on the injury report with the ankle injury. That's a good thing. I'm going to be interested to see defensively, do they, they, do they line up like they did in the last game? Slay on Darius Slayton. They can do that to shut him down because he crushed them last year, if you recall. Of course, Darius Slay was with Detroit last year. What is their plan going to be about against Evan Ingram? who's been, He's having a best season, very consistent, and he's healthy. They're going to need to have a plan for him. Uh, that, that, that matchup worries me, whether it's Alex Singleton or T.J. Edwards. Neither are great cover linebackers. That, to me, is going to have to be something where they're going to have to do a better job against him. Uh, and then Golden Tate will play in this game after his one-game discipline. He'll be back, so I do expect the Giants to spread the Eagles out. That uh, They're deep at wide receiver. And then the, the, the thing, though, that helps the Eagles is they're, good run, they're a good run defense with no Barkley this season because he's on IR with the ACL injury. You don't really worry about their, their run game. Now, Wayne Goldman, if you remember that game, Wayne Goldman started to get the job done in the third quarter. They started to break down against the run for a quarter there. That cannot happen. But overall, I think the way that the Eagles' D-line is playing, they should have an extreme advantage. Of a, by the way, against an offensive line, I don't know if you guys caught this, they're actually rotating offensive linemen. Uh, now, they're going to get Will Hernandez back from the COVID list, one of their starting guards, but you can't have that. I, I, the, Eagles, the Eagles' D-line should dominate the Giants' defense, offensive line this game, and I think that's where one of the big advantages are in this game. You mentioned Singleton and Edwards on Ingram, but what about Will Parks on the tight end position? You know, that's what I thought. I was told pretty reliably that what if your matchup saw is Will Parks would be this positionless player, player where you could line him up, as you said, on a tight end against a guy like uh, Evan Ingram. And Will Parks is a bigger safety, bigger average safety, and he's got coverage ability. That's what I was supposed to, we were supposed to see, but I'm told he's not covered the tight end very much. We see Mills on him. We see the linebackers on him. Uh, Parks a little bit. I would expect going forward, that's one of the self-scout things they needed. They had to do in the, in the bye. Because remember, folks, Tyler Higby got him for three touchdowns. Logan Thomas got him for a touchdown. They've had, they've had issues against the tight end. To me, that's the area where Parks would certainly help them. That's a good question. Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds podcast, drops tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for more on the Eagles and the Giants game. Uh, the linebacking spot. I mean, Ken Vigil this week seems to go out of his way like they mostly do about <laughs> Nate Geary. But – um, yeah. He's not available. Are, is Edwards and Singleton, is, is that their plan at linebacker the rest of the way? Are those the two guys this team's going to run with? Well, right now it is. And then and Duke Riley uh, will play in sub packages to just back either guy up because he can play. He's really an outside linebacker. But, yeah, I, I, I look, Ken Flagel loves his kid. I get it. He thinks he's a coach on the field. But too many mental errors. He just not, doesn't have enough instincts for, for the position. Remember, he's a co- former college safety. I think the next few games will tell if they're going to keep the jobs because Eagles really don't play base. They're, they're a nickel team. Gary's a better athlete, but he doesn't play consistent football. It's just my sense because Singleton has been a great story and T.J. Edwards has taken a big step. It'll be a three-man, three-linebacker rotation. Nick Gary will not be there. I don't see him being a full-time. I don't see him being that 90% playtime guy anymore. Well, time will tell, and plus he's come back from an injury whenever he comes back. I, I do believe T.J. Edwards, though. That the only thing about him is he's not great in coverage, so he's gotten better at it. That's where Gary, they think, is a little bit better. Uh, Adam, you know, you mentioned Ingram, and if he catches that ball, this game is probably meaning a lot different the other way. I mean, the yeah. Giants feel like they're in this race. They almost beat Tampa. They should have beat the Eagles, they feel like. They get a win. Is this Giants team not only improving but gaining confidence? They were losing games, and now they figured out a way to win one. Is this – a tough week to face this team. Yeah, and not only that, I, I know from talking to um, some people from other teams who are, are playing the Giants in the near future, they've got a lot of respect for Joe Judge and he's disciplining this team. You, you know about the Golden Tates thing we mentioned a couple of minutes ago. That, that got a lot of respect. you got to bench your, sometimes your best players when they don't do the right thing. And their defense is playing with tremendous discipline. Patrick Graham, their D coordinator, he used to be a uh, – he was with the Dolphins last year and the, and the Patriots before that. that I'll tell you what, he's done a phenomenal job. That's how he knows Joe Judge, obviously. 
Uh, Graham is doing a fantastic job as their D coordinator. And you know who's playing really well? Leonard Williams, the much maligned former first round pick of the of the of uh, the Jets. That looked to be a bad trade, I'll tell you what, by Dave Gettleman, their GM. But he is playing really well, and he's on a contract season here, so he's doing a good job. Um, th- their D line is no joke, man. They- they're a 34 front, but they're playing with a lot better discipline. And Logan Ryan's giving a-, a really doing a great job as as a free safety, and then also in nickel, he slides inside, guys. So. This is going to be a challenge. I, I, with the rain coming on, I think this is a pretty close game, as a matter of fact. Uh, with that, um, Malik Jackson's another guy. He did not play. They got the bye week. It looked like he's back to full. And just you mentioned defensive line, getting him back. And the way this defensive line has played, you, you know, you wonder – if that could be the thing that carries this team, not only to possibly win the East, but maybe win a couple of these games. Because after this Giants week, things get a lot tougher. Yeah, and they play at Cleveland the following week. Then they have the three-game stretch where it's really, really difficult. Cleveland's very beatable. They just, they don't have much of a pass game. It's all about their run game, and their defense is feast or famine. Yeah, you have to win this game, Mike. You absolutely have to go to – then you go to 500. I, to me, it's, it's a situation where it's not so much the division – it's getting the quarterback. We, we've really not talked about Carson Wentz in, in, in this discussion today. I was telling Mosher this on our show. If he just plays average football, the Eagles are running away with this division. And I know about the, 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 those three tough games. But remember, they've got to play Dallas again. They've got to play Washington again. And this is a situation where they're clearly the better team with talent. The quarterback's got to play like it. He's played, I think, below average this season, quite frankly. Well, it's interesting because uh, we've been kind of throwing around uh, our you know hypothetical poll question, which was – in the end, if the Eagles win the division, the guy who will get the most credit will be who? Wentz, Peterson, oh Schwartz, or Roseman? Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson. I, I, I do believe because you know why? He's got to get. He's got to reach the, the quarterback. He's got to take a more active role in coaching him. I, I, I mean, I think that's obvious. Press Jeller's just not hard enough on him. He, he hasn't been from day one, and they need someone uh, like Doug Peterson who clearly is, uh, you know, he, he's – he knows what needs to get done, and I, I know Doug's been coaching for this will be his fifth year. Nobody knows him better than Doug, and it just has to continue. And, you know, Press Taylor's a guy that they like who's smart, but for whatever reason, it, the, the, it's just not getting done. And Doug Peterson, I believe, is the one who's got to get it done, and I believe it will get done. All right. Uh, we got that game coming up on Sunday. Don't forget the Inside the Birds podcast tomorrow morning drops at 6. I'll have the Inside the Birds pregame show. What's that, 10 o'clock on Sunday? Yep, 10 to 12. Cannot wait from Goose Island Brewery and Fish. Cannot wait. And uh, well, but we usually have a lot of scoops on that show, so I look forward yes. to it. Thanks, guys. Uh, before we run, I do want to get your take on the way Peterson kind of handled that press conference yesterday, uh-huh. which uh, people are going nutsos about. But look, I said to most yesterday, we had, when we talked, I said, it's not the reporter's job, Rob Motti, God bless him, to walk. He saved him. To walk yeah. Peterson down the lane. But man, oh man, could they get their messaging a little straighter? Yeah, I don't know what – that was yet another bizarre just conference where you go, Doug, um, we're giving the answers to the test. Do you sure you want to, sure you don't want to take them? And that's really what Les Bowen did and then Rob Motti to finish it off. And to their credit, they did Doug a solid there. I don't know that I would have done it. But, right. You know, hey, listen, it, it's – it's hey, they did it. They 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 did – you know, they did a, ni- a nice thing there. Um, I think it was bizarre, and I'll just leave it at that. Um he had a, he, let's put it this way, Doug could have cleared it up by saying, hey, you know what, Brett's a close friend of mine, but I don't agree with him. That's all he had to say in the beginning. For whatever reason, he didn't do that. Right. And only he could answer why. Absolutely, yeah. The first question he got from McManus, if he just said that, he wouldn't have got a follow-up. Exactly. And it would have been he, over. You know what? And I, I really do question why he didn't do that. Only he could, I would love to know why he didn't do that because he knew exactly what was coming. Had that, to. That, I mean, I, I do yeah. a show in the morning, five minutes, daily drive. I said, he's getting this question. He has to know he's getting this question. If I know he's getting the question, how do they not know he's getting the well, question? Well, remember, yes, but yes, we all knew that he was going to get the coach's question after the season ended last year. And he said that Mike Groh and Carson Walsh would be back. Well, less than 48 hours Jeez. later, they were not. Uh, that's Adam, the same, That's just another issue. Adam Kaplan at Kaplan NFL. Make sure you wake up tomorrow morning and get the Inside the Birds podcast. It drops at 6 a.m. More nuggets. And don't forget the Inside the Birds pregame show, 10 a.m. on all social media platforms. Adam, thank you, pal. Guys, thank you. All right. He, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Football at 4. It's brought to you by PlaySugarHouse.com. Sign up now. The match your first deposit up to $250.